Facing off uh, for this uh, chance to go into the semifinals, of course, um, at being part of the top eight, as we mentioned, these players have earned um, not only an invite to the uh, the Nationals, but also have earned that beautiful gold Mickey card. So yeah. congrats again to these guys really. for making it this far. Absolutely beautiful stuff. So very much looking forward to... Um, uh, seeing how this goes. These two players are very well known in the community. Absolutely fantastic players, fan favorites for sure. Um, so this is going to be uh, a bit of sweet because obviously you both, you want to see the, uh, the, the the kind of community players do well, uh, but obviously there is only going to be one winner here. So it's going to be hopefully well thought out. Uh, yes. and we're, we're straight in, <laughs> we're, we're diving in. We've got a captain hook down from Ryan. We have uh, the Cinderella singer there from Zam to uh, to great decks here. As Amber Steel songs has just been, uh, you know, since the very beginning one of the uh, one of the most exciting decks in the format. And then uh, Sapphire Steel also uh, just really pulling its weight as well. How do you think the um, players are feeling about this matchup between uh, Sapphire Steel and Amber Steel? Uh, this is an interesting one because in in some ways they're both trying to do very similar sort of things. They're just going to be gaining value from having stuff stick on the board whilst their uh, actions uh, deal with the opponents. So uh, Amber Steel is all about getting those singers down early in Amber and then moving into the Steel songs. Uh, Sapphire Steel is more about sort of taking control of the earlier game so as that you can come out with the uh, the big hitters later on and then probably finishing off with uh, with the Sapphire package of Tamatoa and Lucky Dime. Uh, we see a Fishbone Quill here, which is going to mean some uh, ramp is beginning from Ryan. We have a Smee down with the Captain Hook. Uh, just absolute fantastic quester here. Um, we uh, we may well see a Smee trade here from Zan. Um, mm. Sometimes it's, you just need to get theirs off the board uh, if yours isn't going to be as strong. Uh, but hopefully Cinderella gets to uh, sing something impressive at this point. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he's going to make that trade or do you think he's going to want to get on the board here? It's a tough call. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about this one because at the moment, uh, even though they're the same card, uh, Ryan's Smee is in a much better position than Zan's because of the, uh, just because of that hook there to the point where you can even see that the hook was uh, left ready there because his role now is <laughs> to keep that Smee uh, safe and to keep the, uh, uh, the damage um, up there. Uh, the, other, oh, the other thing is as well is that um, uh, the two damage uh, steel wouldn't be able to finish him off because uh, of the hook there yes. as well. We see an aerial yes. sensational singer, absolute poster child of the deck, uh, does yes. exactly what the deck wants to do. <laughs> Body comes down, looks at four cards, uh, is able to take a song from them and put it into your hand. And not only that, she's a three cost singer five as well. So she's able to sing up uh, into some of those bigger steel cards to so just grab your swords and a whole new world. That's most likely what Sam's going to be looking to do here at some point is to refuel his hand uh, with the whole new world being sang by something like the singer. Yes, there. yep. Yeah, he does have four of those in his deck, Whole New World, so I'm sure we'll see it soon. Uh, I haven't seen his hand, so I'm not sure. What did he pull? World's Greatest Criminal Mind there? Mm -hmm, I yeah. think so. Uh, which is going to be, might, might have been the only one that was there, but also, yeah. uh, you know, later on against some of the bigger steel problems might might be a might be a solid answer there. Uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it hits quite a few big things. It hits Tamatoa. Uh, if we're seeing... Um, if we're seeing Ryan play the Simba that started to see a little bit of play in this deck, the uh, the mm. Steel 5-7 uh, Simba that started to uh, to creep into the meta a little bit later in the day, uh, that one is also a great target for uh, for uh, World's Great Criminal Mind as well. Uh, although it, just, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter because we whole new worlded, uh, so it's already gone. Yes, and it looks like uh, Zan got rid of the whole new world from Ryan's hand because he played that Bare Necessities. Yeah. So I, I'm sure Ryan was sad to see that go, and uh, Zan's right, now right. passed the turnover. Uh, but we did have that uh, SME trade that I that I yes. thought might happen. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I think that's a good call there because, like I say, same card, uh, but on Ryan's board, just going to be doing a lot more work. Yeah, and and he did use Cinderella to sing Bare Necessities, so that leaves her open up to ca that Captain Hook for a challenge. Um, but you know, Cinderella, I think that's okay. Yeah, she she got the value there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think so. At this point, uh, probably takes it. Uh, yeah, the, 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 you already have a better singer on the board now with Ariel, and she's uh, relatively safe this turn. So yeah, I think that was a good play. And then also from Ryan here, we see the tragic hero beast. Just absolute fantastic card here on five. Just going to be refueling that hand back up, especially now uh, we lost the whole new world. Uh, it's a it's a great answer uh, to that, and just being able to keep cards in your hand. Yeah, and it looks like Ryan might be empty-handed right now. Did he play everything? 
think maybe so, yeah. So, yeah. And that's another play, knowing that your opponent is, is most likely looking to whole new world themselves as well, uh, getting as much value as possible out of that mm. happening is, is pretty good. And we just get an absolute ball wipe here. Uh, wow. Along came Zeus uh, taking out Tragic Beast and then Ariel um, challenging, something you don't see her do very often. Not but often. While, that, uh, <laughs> while that Canton Hook is sat there with one uh, health remaining, it's uh, definitely the uh, the right play, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I do typically see Ariel as the, she's your singer. And so to see her challenge into something like that is is really, you know, but it, he cleared his board and puts yeah. him at, in a really good spot, especially with that playing that along came Zeus to get rid of Beast. That was a really, really nice play there. I think uh, the big thing here is that Ryan's, um, Zan's going to be looking at Ryan's hand. It was just one card that he didn't play. Um, the whole new world is uh. is not going to get as much of a tilt as you would like it to. Instead, we see a Benja, absolutely the answer to items in the current meta. Uh, Benja, just a fantastic body that comes down and just banishes an item from your opponent. Uh, just does a lot of work. Pretty much the only consistent item removal you see uh, in the game, honestly. As much as items are a problem, uh, he's really the only one that find, uh, consistently finds a slot. that You do see uh, Judy Hops come along in Sapphire sometimes, but uh, yeah, just a really solid card. Yeah. And, and with Ryan on Sapphire and really wanting to ramp up to some of these bigger cards, how do you think he's feeling with that yeah. fishbone quill being taken out? Yeah. So we see uh, Ryan seeing the uh, whole new world whole there. New world. Uh, just at some point, one of them's got to do it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, and it's going to be really, uh, yeah, fueling whole back up again. New world. I'll sing oh, it. Beautiful. I'll sing it. <laughs> yeah. I can't resist. So we. Uh, uh, with a big yeah, that's ink, uh, sorry, yeah. The big t yeah, the big tink was ink, ink, ink the tink. Exactly. Uh, so back over to Zen though. Obviously, the uh, the better board state and a full hand of cards and uh, five ink most likely will be six. So yeah, Ryan had to uh, refuel there with the whole new world, but it kind of felt great uh, with Zan both ahead on uh, on on board and just now tempo with uh, we've been able to play things down we see a robin oh, hood come robin down hood. yeah that's really nice to, i mean he really is at an advantage here with having uh, three characters on the board now and ryan i'm sure is feeling like he's got to get something down there to deal with with what zan's been able to put out yeah just like you say just zan having the the precision, just every time getting rid of the uh, the, the stuff needed to, and have the the, the deck. Uh, there's a lot of different ramp uh, ways to ramp in in Sapphire, but I feel like this deck is is running uh, quite a few less of them, and and really just focuses on that fishbone. So getting rid of that mm. fishbone uh, when he did was just was like real precision play. Uh, we see a, a fishbone come down and maybe go into ink. Next ink, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this point, you know, we're at seven. Um, you know, you're able to play a lot of the bigger stuff you want. And there's that Simba I mentioned yeah. before. Uh, yeah, he's a seven-costed, inkable five-seven Dreamborn Hero Prince, and he has the ability that when he uh, when he comes into play, and then also when he challenges, you actually get to choose. He's a modal card, so he doesn't see play that often. You can tell because Zan's having to have a read <laughs> of it, but I, it ha I have noticed it come up in meta decks more recently. Uh, when he comes into play or when he challenges, you can either uh, draw two, discard two, um, which is basically ransack when on a body, uh, the card ransack, and then also, mm. uh, or you can deal two damage to a chosen character, which oftentimes is usually the one you go for. It's basically a free fire the cannons. It's actually yeah, pretty strong, but sometimes just that digging through the deck for the answers is enough. But yeah, really interesting se uh, seven drop here, really interesting play, just a good body. That, again, modal cards very often see play because uh, having that options of different things you can do is really quite strong. Yeah, oh, and we see a Cinderella come down on Zan's side, which we've seen uh, from other players, and we know how strong that Cinderella can be, and especially with that Simba there, um, having that resist on such a, a large, you know, willpowered character is going to be really, really nice. Yeah, I, I just I sit there and say how good I think that seven drop Simba is, and then Zan plays the, <laughs> seven, the drop seven drop Cindy Cinderella and right absolutely behind. Laughs, uh, laughs in my coverage <laughs> there because yeah, she is uh, absolute fantastic five five quest for three has resist two so it doesn't even take that two off uh, off of simba uh, and uh, and also uh, which will come up obviously with this being a still song deck she's able to challenge uh, steal uh, able to challenge ready characters when a song has been played so uh, yeah even if we uh, even if we don't turn that simba sideways here uh, if Zan's able to sing a song she'll be able to relatively cleanly take him out the seven uh, damage being enough to do him and then we'll only take three on the crackback because of that resist 
Yeah. Now, you just now saw Zan looking through Ryan's discard, which, of course, the discard is public knowledge, so players are, uh, can do that at any time. What do you think Zan is looking for? Uh, really just seeing how many of the things that we assume to be play sets in the deck have come through. So it's going to be things like how much of the Along Came Zeus's have I seen? How many of the um, a Whole New Worlds have I seen? How many... Uh, um, you know, just things like that, really, just trying to think about how many answers are, are coming, uh, you know, what yeah. can I expect to come. Uh, that damage on uh, Cinderella shouldn't happen there because of the oh, resist yes. one. Uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll catch that. Uh, this is uh, worth pointing out at this point that these games are recorded, so even if we do spot a slip like that, unfortunately there is not much we can do about it. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, the resist there requires... Uh, that triggers for all damage coming in, whether it's from challenge or from abilities mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, so yeah, Cinderella doesn't have a damage on her there, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it's something they'll pick up on. Yeah, Cinderella has resist too, which is, uh, I mean, I think resist is one of the strongest abilities in in Lorcana. It because it's each time uh, damage is done on oh, there, there, they they just caught it. Yep, they just uh, caught it. No, there was no way, no way, neither of them wouldn't. Um, yeah. just, it just takes a moment to look at the board state and figure it out. So. Yeah, uh, there's so much going on in these players' heads right now. I can't even imagine. Um, but yeah, that resist is in so resist two on, on this five five character that Cinderella is is just so strong yeah yeah uh, yeah i think what zan would like to see here is a song so that cinderella can yeah. start challenging into the ready uh, uh ready characters i think yeah doesn't look like he has a song in hand i see a robin hood and i got just a quick glimpse but yeah a song would be really great i think those if they're five drop on incables they must be songs so they're either whole new worlds or grab your swords i could just see the ink cost so i'm not quite sure there's a whole new world. I think oh, yeah. I also spied Sleepy's flute. He has a couple of whole new worlds, it looks like. So yeah. I, I wonder if he's thinking if that's if he wants to refill his hand here. Uh, it's uh, Multiple whole new worlds in the hand is never good because by playing one of them, you're getting rid of another one of them. Um, uh, so yeah, he has a, a long came Zeus. That, that's, that's a nice card. Yeah. So long came <laughs> Zeus is going to target the... Um, I think you can take out... Oh no, you can't take out the Simba on its own. Simba is a 5-7. Um, so I think we might see here, I was going to put the damage on it. Yeah. And then challenge. And then Cinderella is going to go into the Tinkerbell, which she, she can mm -hmm. do. She can hit a ready card uh, because of the, um, uh, because the, of the, the, the playing of the song there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I, I, again, with the thematic, you know, <laughs> that they've done with all these characters and their abilities. I, I, Cinderella, some of her other characters that you see in the game is a singer. I think there's a, a true drop that's a singer four, you know, so, and then yeah. the ballroom sensation, the one singer three. And then here we have this big Cinderella that comes in. And when you play a song, she can challenge ready characters. I just kind of love how they tie that together um, from one card to another card with the, with the same character. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm wondering uh, a little there why those two cards didn't go the other way around and the along came Zeus could have taken out the Tinkerbell and then Cinderella could have finished the, the Simba in a challenge. Um, but I'm, you know, uh, I'm sure Zan's got his reasons. Do you, I, I wonder if it's just because they sees Tink as more of a threat because Tink, when she challenges, that she can put that additional damage on another character. And so he wanted to clear her off the board because of that. Yeah, they, they they both would have done though that way because the long came Zeus deals five damage, which is enough to put Tinkerbell, um, and then the Cinderella being a seven seven could have gone into Simba. So uh, we see Cogsworth oh, come down Cogsworth. here. I think he's uh, uh, first one of those that we've seen today. I think they, they, a couple of the uh, couple of the games on the floor saw this one, but it's definitely our first time commentating about him. He's a five costed Inkable two five with two law. Uh, he can be shifted, although he doesn't really see the shift target any play. Uh, he has ward and also gives other characters uh, that you control resist one. So a uh, real solid body that is very difficult to remove, very difficult to answer. Uh, he uh, does quest for two, but most likely will just sort of sit there and uh, provide uh, the resist um, and then Simba is able to uh, finish off the Cinderella there and then with the two other damage, take out the other characters. The Benja. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Zan still has that Robin Hood on board, though. So, uh, you know, he, he lost Cinderella, but I think he's feeling okay, right? How, how do you think he's feeling right now with this board state? 
Uh, yeah, it's it, it's really just a back and forth at this point. They're both doing exactly what they need to do. They're answering cards when they need to. Uh, they're they're extending their board when they can. They're grabbing little bits of lore here and there. Uh, these decks, like I say, although they have very different ways of getting there, they kind of want to do the same sort of thing, which is control the uh, the early game and then uh, drop some uh, larger threats uh, yeah. later on. And, and when you're up against a deck that also wants to do that, uh, you can find that it you just sort of end up putting heads all the way through the game and you end up getting and these very sort of slow incremental wins. Uh, the Sleepy Flu is definitely going to help Zan there. We also see a whole new world. Um, yeah. So at the end of the day, he's losing one, but I do think that's a, a good play there just to refuel as you move further into the end game. Yeah, and I did see that uh, Ryan had a, a lucky dime and a whole new world himself that he had to discard there when uh, Zan played whole new world. Um, of course, he has more lucky dimes waiting, but I'm sure Zan's glad to see at least one of them go. And he did uh, draw a new whole new world over in Zan's hand. You can see Strength of Raging Fire, Bare Necessities is in there. I saw a Rapunzel as well. So a lot of answers then. Um, we yeah. can definitely, over the other side, we have another Dime. Ah, uh, another Portugal, Dime. Another Long Came, another long came Zeus. I think we were... Yeah, it looks uh, like we'd, it. We've seen all of those there, perhaps. Oh, no, sorry. Last last game we saw all of them, excuse me. And they're all starting to blend into one. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we see a better necessities, which is great for us. We get to see a better version, a better look at the deck. Uh, so we have the Beast, Hot Headed. We have uh, Tragic Hero and Smee. And then on the other side, uh, we have the stuff he can actually take. Along came Zeus, a Popsicle, a Lucky Dime. And, and boom. boom, I think that last one is. Yes. There. Yeah. Uh, so hard headed is an interest. Hard headed, excuse me, is an interesting one. He's basically a slightly bigger Benger. He's a five costed four four with two, law, and uh, will banish a uh, an item when it comes out. So most likely we'll want to see that come down to get rid of that flute. I feel. Uh, I suppose the bonus here is yes, it's a, a turn or two later than the Benger, uh, but it is a possible. Uh, well, no, I don't think you, you would play as a shift target for hit tragic hero. No, it's just a it's no. just a personal preference. Sometimes <laughs> I know a few people just prefer the uh, the hard headed beast over uh, over Benja. I personally prefer the Benja just be, just for fishbone quill. If nothing else, uh, it gets rid of that fishbone quill before it's done too much damage. So, yeah, it looks like Ryan is only running two of those beast hard headed and doesn't have any Benjas in his list. But we do see the Benja um, over on Zan's side. We've we've obviously seen one or maybe even two and. That's all he has in his deck is just those two. All right. So Cogsworth not doing much on his own here, giving other stuff resists, but when there's no other stuff, uh, you know, he'll he'll just sit there and, and just make your board a little stronger. So hopefully uh, for Ryan, he'll be able to get some more bodies down. And we'll probably see a popsicle play here just to... Uh, have a little bit more uh, information. Always, if you're able to draw cards, always do them as early as you can into the turn because the more cards in your hand, the more information you've got, the more answers you have. Uh, always try and draw uh, before anything else for the most part. There's a couple of times where you wouldn't want to, but for the most part, you want to be looking at cards uh, before you decide what to do. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Yeah, you want as many options as you have to make the best decisions that you can with what's going on is the the best thing to do. And it looks like he did bring that hard, hard headed, hard headed beast. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say hard headed, hard headed beast down to <laughs> take care of Sleepy's flute. <laughs> yeah. He is probably a little bit of a hot head, you know that beast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we see uh, a lot of resources going into the Venger here, both uh, Cogsworth and um, and uh, Anna Baboom and the Porpsicle to heal the Cogsworth back up again. So, uh, yeah, I really didn't want that Venger to stick around. Yeah. Uh, no, at this point, though, Zan is, you know, 11 law, sorry. So, you know, that, 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 that quest for two on Venger is, is a little bit more threatening than we perhaps think. Yeah, it, it does look, I thought I saw Hiram uh, Flowersham in Ryan's hand, which of course he he needs uh, some items out there to banish in order to get the card draw, but he used that popsicle to heal Cogsworth. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, it's not something you see very often, to be honest with you. Popsicle, uh, for the most part, comes out on one, replaces itself, and then gets uh, chewed up by Hiram. Uh, <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. much the, 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 the optimal line there for Popsicle, but sometimes you do forget that it does have a second ability where you can banish it to its own ability uh, to heal to, uh, which we're seeing Zandu here with a Rapunzel healing up the Robin Hood uh, and refueling yes. his hand. Uh, Rapunzel allows you to heal up to three damage uh, from a character, and then for each damage that you heal, you get to draw a card. Really fantastic card. Uh, seen consistent play through in set, uh, since set one. Uh, not as much now, but um, but but definitely still one of the uh, one of the strongest amber cards. I feel. No, absolutely. And it uh, looks like Zan 
has a few different songs that he could play here if he wanted to. Uh, Ryan's taking a look through uh, Zan's uh, discard. Again, just sort of looking for tallies of play sets, what's gone. Yeah, I feel like at these, um, you know, when you have these longer matches that go back and forth and back and forth, that um, knowing, you know, how, you know, like how many whole new worlds and long came Zeus, like you said, knowing how many have been played is really just going to help you make the best decisions possible, knowing what might still be coming. Yeah. So we see Rapunzel and Robin Hood and a second Robin Hood there, kind of a, a aggressive board uh, from Zan Ryan with the uh, the Beast and the Cogsworth, definitely wanting to be uh, uh, trying to quest and, and sort of close that lore gap. He's got a lot of ink, got a lot of cards in hand. Both players, a lot of ink and a lot of cards in hand. So really wanting to be sort of to uh, Ryan's going to be wanting to close out the, uh, the the gap here. We see a big Tamatoa come oh, down. Tamatoa. He's able to go and grab an item back and then. Uh, replay it with that last ink. So that make, uh, goes again. Oh, sorry, let me just get my words together. I'm getting all excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, explains a little bit why the Porpsicle got uh, popped to heal up the Cogsworth there because yeah. he knew full well that Tamatoa was going to be able to get it back. And it looks like that's what we'll see again next turn. Tamatoa not only brings an item back from the discard on play, also does it on quest as well. Uh, we see a tragic hero go into the Inkwell too. Now, interesting here with uh, Ryan's deck is he actually only runs one copy of Tamatoa in ah. his deck. So it, it really is that uh, kind of silver bullet, I suppose, you know, um, coming into play here. And he happened to get it in this game. And, and I think it's going to do him some good. Yes, I think so. Yeah, so it's not necessarily the big uh, the big closeout. I think the uh, the big closeouts here are just just the bigger steel characters being able to comfortably quest which was seen here with uh, cogsworth and uh, oh, the beast went into uh, the robin hood so uh, but yeah tamato are on the board if we can get an item or two to stick uh, it's going to be a, a tricky problem for zan to deal with i i know we talked about uh, world's greatest criminal mind before Mm. Was that because it was in discard, or I'm assuming it's been wheeled away by now with the, uh, with the whole new world? <laughs> yeah, it's in his discard. He did. Um, he got that when he played his Aero Spectacular Singer earlier in the game, but uh, because yeah. of that whole new world, it went into his discard. But that would definitely come in handy right now. He doesn't yeah. have a good answer for Tomatoa. Tomatoa has eight willpower. Yeah, um, so he's huge guy. Yeah, he's gonna need a, a couple things to take care of that that crab. Uh, let the storm rage on finishes off beast there now cogsworth is removed uh, beast no longer has the one resist we see another flute come down uh, and just start to and then rapunzel questing as well uh, definitely closing this game out now tamatoa is an amazing card uh, but without much else on the board he's you know he's only questing for one i i feel like we uh, we really need to see Ryan pull out a couple of uh, uh, characters to to sort of contest the board and an item or two so that Tamatoa gets turned on. Uh, we see a queen come down as well, which is going to make um, Robin Hood's uh, trades a lot better. Oh, the lore is updated at that point. Sorry, I thought we were a little bit further away. So, uh, yeah, at this yeah. point, I think it's probably going to... Uh, Ryan needs Zan's to really game. pull out an answer here. Um, but obviously, you know, very, no time limit. Uh, well worth taking a moment just to think about all of your different outs, think about all of your different options, uh, playing for it to see what happens. Uh, Tamato is going to bring back a Popsicle. I imagine that Popsicle will get played to draw a card. Again, just seeing as much information as you can. Um, you know, but, but at this point, I, I think it's probably game one to Zan. Four puts down a Hiram, which pops the Popsicle, gets to see two more. Uh, so all of these, you know, digging for answers, but all of these these plays cost uh, ink as well. So the more I you think go, he knows. yeah, yep. there you go. The more you go, the less you're going to do with the with the leftover ink that yeah. you've got. Uh, did exactly what being altered here, knowing what's coming. What are they looking for in that opening hand? So I imagine Ryan's going to be wanting to get rid of Zan's early singers. So Ryan's mm. going to be looking for removal for Cinderella. Um, and then uh, maybe a little bit later, Ariel. Also, some of the uh, the, the Floodborne targets of Robin Hood and Queen. So I think that's uh, pretty solid there. Zan, I, in, to some extent, the similar kind of thing, but also going to be looking uh, for that item removal to shut down the Fishbone on turn three. I do see a Benger in hand um, and a, a Robin Hood here. So we'll see whether Ryan has an answer to it. And then, yeah, Zan's going to definitely be looking to get rid of that Fishbone Quill as soon as he can. 
Yeah, Zan does have a whole new world there waiting. So uh, I'm sure that's going to be becoming. And if he can draw a narrow spectacular singer soon, that'll be real nice for him. Mm-hmm. You see, Mr. Smee, Smee come down from uh, from Ryan. Got a got a good bit of value out of him in game one, uh, but didn't really stick around much. Uh, yeah, Zan as playing Steel Song, absolutely. you you want to be uh, getting whole new worlds played as quick as you can, uh, whether that's through uh, the aerial singer or uh, your shift uh, shifted five drops singing it. So, you know, pretty much all of the uh, the shift targets in the deck of the Robin Hood champion of Sherwood, the queen commanding presence, uh, all can sing it uh, and really get that, uh, get that, the, uh, the, the, the card draw started. Uh, and, you know, you're, yes, you're fueling both of your hands, but you're doing it because you want to do it. Uh, they're doing it because you're making them. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, interesting here, we didn't see Ryan quest with Smee, and he did put down those Captain Hooks, so Smee would not have taken damage since there was a Captain in play. Uh, what do you think he was thinking there? Uh, he just has to respect that Robin Hood. Uh, just He's has sure. to know that the, uh, <laughs> that the champion of Sherwood come, come down. It doesn't look like it's in Zan's hand, but uh, again, I'll say this, you always have to play as if your yeah. opponent has the exact answer. You all, <laughs> you always yes. have to play. Occasionally, you can throw enough on the board down and be like, ah, you be prepared or you haven't. Um, but uh, but yeah, you always have to kind of respect what those uh, smaller characters that look very unassuming. There it is. Uh, I, 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 I was I didn't think it was in the hand, but it was. Um, he just drew it. Yeah, he he actually only has that Benja and Rapunzel in hand as far as characters yeah. go, and then some songs. But on the play, on his turn, he drew that Robin drew Hood, it. which so, yeah, I'm so, sure he was real happy to see. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right play from Ryan there to to keep the Smee up. Uh, yeah, so at the, at the, right now he can. He's in a good position. He can take a turn off and 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 sort of really just build that board state out. Yeah, and I can't see what else Ryan has in his hand. Um, but he doesn't have a lot of bigger bodies besides you know Smee is at three three, but I'm sure he's is sitting at four. Um, ink that he's looking for some of the bigger characters to be able to play soon. Yeah, a high room would be really good here, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, get that popsicle popped and start refueling your hand at this point. Uh, we see a whole new Cogsworth. world, Cogsworth, and uh, I think uh, a long time Zeus. And Tell, talk about the strategy here with Whole New World because it does seem um, sometimes like you're giving your opponent an advantage by giving them new cards, which we do see him playing there with uh, using Robin Hood to sing A Whole New World. Yeah, um, there is definitely a risk uh, risk versus reward with Whole New World. You're, you, like you said, you're fueling your hand back up again, but you're letting your opponent do the same. And uh, usually more often than not, you're... Uh, your whole new world is then passed to an opponent with ink ready. So you, you, you're you definitely giving them a little bit of advantage there. Uh, but the reason you want to do it is your whole deck is built around going through and finding those uh, key pieces earlier. And there's having that uh, sort of tempo shift of doing it on your terms. You know, the, the whole new world is being played when you want to play it. Uh, we'll see yes. here that the Rapunzel came down with nothing to heal just to get that body on the board, get her out of the hand before the whole new world comes there. And uh, Ryan yeah. didn't have that. Uh, didn't have that opportunity, right? Was just got rid of the cards that was in his hand. Cogsworth probably would have been a nice play for him here. He now doesn't have it. He also gets rid of his whole, uh, his his own whole new world. Uh, yes. But in doing so, uh, Zan is also giving Ryan a full hand of cards to uh, to play with. So uh, yeah, it's definitely a risk versus reward uh, strategy. Yeah. Well, and like you said, uh, you know, with uh, being able to control, you have the decide. You just you decide when it happens instead of having it happen to you. You're yeah. deciding when you get that new hand. So we see a Mickey come down to build of uh, that inkwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mickey lets you put a uh, detective Mickey. That is sorry, yeah. lets you put a card into the inkwell exerted when he comes down. So it's ramp, uh, not the quickest ramp in the game, but definitely uh, you know still a perfectly sensible way to ramp cards up. We see a baboom getting, and then we see the double uh, Captain Hook going into the Robin Hood. There, really great play. I think mm-hmm. uh, definitely worth holding um, holding them back uh, for that. Uh, you know, even holding the Smee back before as well. You know, so that the Robin Hood couldn't go in and get healed yeah. by the Rapunzel. Just really, really great plays from both of them here they, know, they seem to know exactly what they're doing yeah that mickey mouse um detective has been around since set one mm-hmm. is that a card that we are i mean we see it now in ryan's deck do we see it often in uh sapphire decks that mickey mouse yeah. card there's definitely still a spot for it. It, it i feel like personally it's been a little bit outpaced by things like put uh, by things like uh fishbone quill mm-hmm. um but you know there's still something to be said about a body coming down and, and providing ramp and then sticking around as well um yeah 
Let me see. Another Smee come down here. That's interesting. We're going to sing Let the Storm Rage On with Rapunzel. And of course, he gets to draw off of that as well. I love any song or action that you can play where you you can replace it by drawing a card. It's really nice. Absolutely, yeah. We're just going to... Ton of value off the songs here, They're replacing themselves. The, the the flute is online now at this point as well. So, yeah, yeah. This was really, really. Uh, these two decks are very evenly matched. Two very skilled players. Uh, both of them are sitting now at just two lore, and it's. I feel like it's going to just be a lot of back and forth again, like we saw last game. Very close. Absolutely. Just going to be edging out board presence when they can, edging out lore game when they can. Um, just doing exactly what they need to do. Very, uh, very exciting stuff, especially with, um, uh, you, like you said, two two real sort of pro players, really. Both fantastic players and great personalities as well. Both really mm-hmm. sort of uh, appreciated in the community. So uh, really great to see them here sort of thrashing it out. Yeah, uh, I do spy a Cinderella stout hearted over in Zan's hand. We're a couple turns away because that it costs seven to bring her down and he only has five in his ink well. But um, if we don't see another whole new world before we get there, I'm sure he will be playing that. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to yes. do three damage over there on Rapunzel, it looks like, with the Smee. Mm-hmm. Now, if you had um, another Rapunzel who could come and heal it, yeah, nope. no, well, I, boom, boom. I was just <laughs> about to say, cannons. there's no way Ryan leaves something uh, un, <laughs> half healed on uh, on Zan's board at this point. So I, I was going to suggest it was a boom, but instead it was a fire of the cannons again, just to finish her off there. Um, yeah, I think that's an absolutely fair play at that point to get her off the board, but never, never leave something damaged onto a steel uh, steel song player's board. <laughs> Fire the cannons. I haven't seen a lot of that today, uh, but that's just a, a one cost, uninkable action to deal two damage to chosen character. It's just a simple, uh, you can play it at any point in the game. It's a real fun card. Yeah, um, I, a lot of play, a lot of players are, are running Baboom over it now, which is a two cost, but it is inkable and it does two damage to a character or location. Um, so you, sometimes it's it's the extra you need to finish off the castle. Um, but yeah, there's something to be said about just a one drop that deals two. Uh, yes. you know, just just as the baseline for for what this game uh, allows you to do. Yeah, so um, Ryan has one of each in his deck, and that's it. So one Fire the Cannons, uh, one Baboom, and he happened to have that Fire the Cannons at just the right moment. Here. Yeah, exactly. It just it, uh, They're basically in there to help a trade like that happen, I'm pretty yes. sure. They're, they're just there to just finish off something that uh, something else is sort of trading up into, which is what we saw with the Smee there. Uh, we're going to have Robin Hood sing. Uh, then along came Zeus to take out the beast. A great target for that. Mm-hmm. We don't want to see uh, Ryan drawing cards if we're Zan. He uh, does have another some... Sleepy's Flute there. Is that something you think he wants to get on the board so for that additional lore gain? Um, yeah, I mean, always, you know, flutes are just going to help you close out the game. Um, but obviously at this point as well, you're also going to be looking for board presence. Uh, Ryan hasn't got much going on here with the with the uh, the Smee that's got two damage on him and the and the Minnie Mouse uh, Mickey Mouse. So you might be able to take a turn off here to get the flute down, which is what Zan does. Uh, and he still has three ink to play with, so most likely can still get something like a Smee down. I see a couple of them there. Um, we uh, we ink a Robin Hood, which mm. gives us four. So we might just see, yeah, there we go. We see double Smee, which is yep. which is kind of kind of awesome. <laughs> that is kind uh, of awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a really solid turn. So two two. Uh, Two flutes uh, turning sideways there. I think the the law might be a little off. I think I think we were a little higher for Zam. So um, the Robin Hood went into the champion. The big Robin Hood went into his inkwell. Of course, Robin Hood only quest for two, and so he's put down two Smees that both quest for two. So feeling like that was a, a good decision there. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The board presence from the from yep. the swing is is, is kind of huge, uh, and just knowing that uh, Ryan's uh, removal package is very similar to 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 his own, and uh, knows that more bodies just mean that those uh, single target steel removals are just going to be doing less. Uh, we just see a giant tink come down there, doing one to all of them, uh, which is going to. Uh, speed up Smee's demise if we uh, if we don't see a captain, which I don't think we mm. will in um, in uh, in Amber Steel for Zan's deck. It doesn't play the uh, the one drop captain hook. I, I do know that um, that some players play Piglet, uh, the Amber captain. Uh, the ah pirate, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, which I think is quite a good pairing with Mr. Smee. Mr. Smee doesn't mind where his captains come from. He just needs exactly. one. Exactly. He just uh, needs function, a captain. So he's happy to get in line behind uh, behind. Uh, <laughs> Uh, poo, yes. uh, behind Piglet. <laughs> yes, yes. Smee is a follower, not a leader. Yeah, so absolutely. any captain will do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Ryan does have, a, looks like a Hiram in hand, which I would expect to come down soon, especially with all those popsicles over there and yep. to get some more cards in hand. And yep, he is questing with Smee. Definitely want to be uh, refueling at some point, but I do think the, the the big team was the good play there just to start to put the pressure on against these uh, uh, Robin Hoods. Robin Hoods wants to trade. That one damage might be enough to uh, make Zan have to rethink it. Those Smees are going to be taking damage at the end of turn if they quest, so the one damage there is just speeding up uh, how long they're going to be on the board for. So, yeah, I think the big team was a really great line there for, for Ryan. Yeah, Big Tink is so fun, and her art is amazing. It's she's came out in set one in the first chapter, and has been like a fan favorite, I think, <laughs> ever since uh, she made her appearance. So much so that the playmat for this newest set, Ursula's Return features the art from that card and it's yeah. beautiful i remember first when i first saw that card revealed uh it kind of made me really sit up and notice look on i'd obviously been covering ah. it since it was very first announced uh just as a big disney fan and a, and a, and a big card game player but uh giant fairy was the one that made me sit up and be like oh wow not only is the art incredible and really something that we hadn't seen before i don't feel um just the the abilities on her the amount that she does the stats on her when i obviously you know been caught up now with lots of other really great cards but at the time uh you know she really sort of uh, blew the box open as to what was possible with lorcana so i i, I very fond memories of uh, of giant team being revealed yes. yeah yeah, she's definitely a favorite. She's so fun. And the alternate art with on the Enchanted is also super fun. Yeah. Uh, all the art in this game it is amazing. And I think for folks out there who are huge Disney fans, oh, and we see Ariel digging for some cards, and he does find a whole new world there for mm -hmm. Zan. Um, you know, I think it does, the art catches a lot of attention of, of Disney fans because it's characters that we know and love and being drawn in these new wonderful ways. And it also helps remember the characters more for me, you yeah. know, because they're 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 characters I'm familiar with. So I remember Giant Tink and Robin Hood and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, we see Robin Hood going into um, Mickey Mouse Detective there, like really sort of. I don't say obvious, but like very clean line there. Mickey Mouse sure. is not putting up much of a threat for Robin Hood there. Just takes uh, one damage on the uh, on the challenge there. We see a Rapunzel come down, instantly healing it and drawing uh, some. And we are trading into that SME. Smart there. Yeah. And then, yeah, just just real great turn from Zan there. Just absolute board control. Doing everything he needed to do. Drew cards. Uh, cleared the board up a little bit. Developed his, uh, his own lore as well. Yeah, just real great play there. Yeah, and he is questing for two with that last Smee who does take one additional damage because there's no captain in play. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going over now to Ryan. So it does feel like Ryan needs to find some answers here. He's got a Hiram, Flavorsham, and is it a Lucky Dime? And he just drew something else. But um, what do you think he's hoping to do? Get some yeah, board think, presence back? Oh, oh yeah, look at, definitely looking for answers with the, with the Hiram here. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the play just sort of getting... Uh, some card advantage in your hand. Uh, the, the Mickey there, I don't think he's going to be doing much. Yeah, the Fishbone fish Quill, Quill isn't really going to be doing much at this point in the game. You know, we're getting up to the levels, you know, to the point where we're actually inking it there, you see, because we're getting up to the ink levels that they kind of want to be happy with. Uh, Cogsworth is actually pretty solid here. Um, Tinkerbell is very happy trading <laughs> uh, with stuff that, uh, that Cogsworth is going to help her do that. I think we probably see... Um, and, and, and do we see Tink maybe go into? Do you think uh, Robin Hood? Hood? Yeah, so Robin Hood is six no, willpower. There's no damage on there on Robin Hood. So it's not quite enough, unfortunately. Not quite enough. Um, yeah. So and the and the two damage that she does does have to go uh, to a uh, different character. Yeah. Well, she it only happens on Banish, so it, on she Banish. can't she can't challenge into Robin Hood and then use the two to finish him off. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. she can go into Smee and put two onto Robin to start that process. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a difficult line at the moment. There's not really a great target for her. And he's thinking he about it. Yeah. Yes. He so is going to go with Smee. And then putting the two on the Robin Hood. That means, you know, next turn, now Robin Hood going into uh, Tinkerbell uh, is uh, is pretty good. We pop the popsicle to heal her up as well. So now she's at full health and there's a Cogsworth out giving her resist one. Uh, yeah, it's a, really, it's a good choice, I think. That's, that's probably what I'd have gone for as well. Yeah. 
it, it amazes me the, these players, you know, playing at this level and just what they can see and thinking ahead, you know, a couple turns and seeing all these lines of play and knowing what's coming and how they're able to just, um, you know, make things switch so quickly. You know, it looks like they're in trouble and then they just do something amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to see. I mean, both both players here really, really playing their hearts out, and and yeah. with with kind of clunky hands at this point as well. You know, we're seeing a lot of like double whole new worlds in hands. Mm -hmm. uh, with your uh, Ryan there with with the ramp that he wanted to see much earlier in the game. Now it's Cinderella it, now coming down. Uh, there yeah. she is. Stout hearted, <laughs> absolutely huge. Uh, she is a seven cost, uh, but wow, she's uh, she's going to be starting to do a lot now. Five five again with resist two, quest for three. And can challenge uh, ready characters. So we have a dime and a Mickey on uh, yeah. Ryan's side. I mean, the dime. Not what he wants. No, yeah. it doesn't have a great target. You know, Tinkerbell or Cogsworth both questing for two. Uh, we see a grab your sword come down. Uh, that'll just be one for the Hiram and the Tinkerbell uh, due to Cogsworth resist. Um, but again, it's just going to help the uh, help the trades if he decides on it. Instead, he's going to quest, really start putting some pressure on. I think that's definitely the right play here from Zan. I think he's going to want to try yeah. and close this game out pretty quickly then. It does feel like we're just a, maybe a turn or two away from Zan taking this. Uh, Ryan does not have the hand right now that he needs. We'll see if he can draw something. But let's, let's see what he's got. Yeah, Lothos is a little behind here, I think. Zan mm. is on uh, uh, tw uh, 12, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, card, and yeah. he also had the he also had the flutes as oh, well. Oh, flutes as well. Flutes. So we might, yeah, we might even be on fourteen. He might then. be on fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he might he might have um have the win on board unless Ryan can find the answer here. That Cinderella really, really made a big difference here. You could tell. Huge, <laughs> huge shifted body, things. <laughs> very difficult to deal with. And yeah, uh, yeah and, and quest for three. Just again, all these big steel. Uh, you know, end game plays just they can they do everything they do it all they 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 yes. quest well they challenge well <laughs> yes uh, they just tick all the boxes yeah so he's at so yeah so they've updated the lore counter so Zan's at fourteen now Ryan's at six and he's got that Mickey and dime and something else I can't quite see in his hand and he is shaking his head I think he's yeah I I, uh, I mean I I really I can't think at all here what what Ryan can have but like I said before these games aren't timed at this point. Uh, you should always just, you know, play as much as you can, see as much as you can. Dying comes down. I, I, I think we're probably just going to quest uh, uh, for one to pop the dime just to see something, which is yeah. uh, which is kind of crazy. So the the dime does cost two to exert. Uh, but yeah, mm, he's showing his yes. hand and saying, good uh, game, my hand is bricked, uh, you absolutely yes. take that one. So there we go, Zan in two, a great player. I mean, both really fantastic players there, but 